All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 533 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am Via Baller. We'll be able to talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football, but we're not going to talk about neither one of them today. Um, I don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I can't wait for football season to restart again, especially for the college level. Um, you know, the spring game is going to be uh, happening really soon, the combine as well. And uh, it's going to be a really good time. But for some players, they're not going to be able to experience that. Um, some of them have moved on to the transfer portal, and some of them are stuck in limbo. And I want to talk about that today. Um, so we're going to end the week on a very different note. Uh, I really wanted to get this. Uh, I really wanted to get this out there because I, I was listening to a few podcasts, not just you know, you know, yesterday or throughout the week. Uh, I've been listening to it for, I'll say maybe a few weeks maybe about a month of some topics about the transfer portal. And I really didn't want to talk about it, but it, it, it after a while it kind of gets to you and the end of the season is over and you got some players who been in the transfer portal since last season and they were not able to find a home. And I find it disheartening because a lot of these kids have talent and um, I'm just going to give you my opinion about it how it's playing out, why it's playing out this way. And to be quite honest, try to give some insight on what I think could happen with this. So if this is your first time here, welcome. I don't usually talk about this stuff, but um, I really want to. Um, Hopefully you will enjoy. I could be found on uh, YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. This show is also brought to you by BetUS. Click that link down in the description. Put down $100, get a 100, 125% bet book bonus so you can start off on your uh, journey of making more money off of these games, whether it be NBA, MMA, uh, college basketball, esports, everything under that umbrella. If you have a gambling problem, please go seek some um, avenues to get some assistance. I don't have that assistance here, but um, I don't want to push that on people to say that it's okay because if you do have an issue first thing you do is acknowledge that so um today is to me it's just going to be a little bit different um we're going to talk about the transfer portal a lot of these kids have not um gotten the best uh advice in some cases some of them are you know a little bit emotional when it comes to going to the transfer portal to feel like they can make their own decisions and it kind of sucks because I've seen some kids, not only just at Georgia Southern, but at other places, you know, move on because things just wasn't going right. Um, it, it, it really sucks to see that. But at the same time, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. But you really are setting yourself up for a really big problem. You have some kids now or some players now that are really talented and um some of have been just sitting in limbo for weeks in some cases months and i know for a few of them it's going on for a year or two and 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 the thing about it is a lot of these kids i'm not saying it's all sold on bad advice or emotions sometimes they're just not getting the all the information they need to be a good uh football player to be a good teammate to be a good, you know, um, a stand-up leader. Because when you put on a uniform for any team, you are considered a leader to some, not just not just your teammates, uh, but, you know, to people like me. The, the average guy that's just watching the game. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of spirit. It takes a lot of pride. It takes a lot of determination to put on that jersey for whatever team you're playing for and go out there and give it your all. Uh, also, I know there are some situations where coaches don't uh, live up to their end of the bargain. There are some coaches will sell a kid a dream, and then when they when the kid gets to the program, they find like it's not what it is, and they feel like they felt a little betrayed, and they don't want to be at the program anymore. Um, sometimes there's home issues. Sometimes there's um, homesick issues. Sometimes there are just issues just being on the team with other players. I get it, but in most cases, I I will say in most cases, it could be worked out. I feel like, because I've been looking at on the 
this website on three.com. I'll put it in. I'll put the, the link in the description. So you can look at it. Just 2023. Uh, you know, FBS. I'm not talking about FCS or junior co- or junior cra- uh, college division two, II, division three, because they have a lot of them there too. But just in the FBS, they had almost 3000 kids into the transfer portal in 2021, 2023. Right now we had, I'll say 2022, 2023, we had 1,923 kids enter 1,095 have committed. Now I got a question about that. If 3000 kids entered the transfer portal in 2021 to 2022, is now going to 2023 and is now less than 2000 and 57 of them, 1,195 or 1,095 has committed. There's a whole nother thousand kids that's just not there. They just, they just left the sport altogether. And sometimes some kids don't cut it out. I they don't cut it out for the sport. But I, I refuse to believe that a thousand of those kids are just not there anymore. I just, I, it's just hard for me to believe that. I believe that there is misinformation out there. There's a lot of egos involved. And there's a lot of, there's a lack of humbling. I feel that if you want my opinion, I feel like kids need to go back and really evaluate what's going on before they make this decision. They, I feel like they need to go other routes to get yourself on the field. If you're at the FBS level and you feel like you want to play this position, but can't make yourself useful if possible. Now I'm not saying that this is 100% uh, guaranteed, but you got to make yourself available. Go play a different position. Go do a, uh, any you know go through anything is go do anything to make yourself known even if you have to go to the junior college level if you have to go to d2 you know you know fcs d3 you know and don't give up you know just don't just because i know some kids who was at a fbs went to fcs and they went after they went from one they went to the transfer portal down to the fcs leave that school and they're back in the transfer portal again and I and to be honest, this kid has amazing talent. But you're just not trying to, you know. I, I hate to sound harsh because I don't like ragging on these college students. Because in my opinion, I still feel like they're kids still trying to find their way, especially if they're freshmen. And and, and, and you know, I know I'm in eight minutes in, and I know people probably get this misconstrued. I'm I'm mainly talking about freshmen and sophomores. Juniors and seniors, I kind of get it. If you find a place where you can get playing time, you don't put in the work for the first two years. You still feel like you can't get playing time. You go somewhere else and try to, you know, put yourself out there. I get it. But some of these freshmen and sophomores, we need to put in the work. We need to put in the work and show. Some of the best players are ones who are willing to do different things on the field. You know, go and play special teams. Go and play a different position. Hell, if you still can play the position, go to a junior college and work your way back up. I know some players who've done that. You know, there's some there's some players on there's a there's a player on Georgia Southern right now who has done that. Went to a junior college and worked their way back up to another you know FBS opportunity. You know, and and, and I think you know a lot of, another thing that really hurts. This whole situation, in my opinion, is, you know, peer pressure. Sometimes you have, like, your peers telling you, oh, you're supposed to do this while you're not starting. Oh, you this supposed to be that play. You're supposed to be the man. Or they start talking bad about them. Oh, you're a bum because you let such and such beat you out in your your uh, your uh position. Or you couldn't make it this way. So it is, you know, you can't do that. And, and that that's very tough. No kid should be able to, no kid should go through that. And then on the world of, you know, Social media, you know, this thing here, they see stuff about them all the time. It's one of the reasons why I try to give every kid that I know that, I mean, that I 
that I know that definitely to come into Georgia Southern, I try to give them the most encouragement because to me, I understand it's about Georgia Southern. I want this, I want the school to be prosperous and have the best talent. And I think they can bring the best out of these players becoming Georgia Southern men, becoming GS men. But at the same time, it is for them one to go other places and play. Or they decide to go somewhere else because that, you know, Georgia Southern is not a fit for them. Go be great. It's unfortunate because you got a lot of kids, like I said, from that 3000 that was there for 21 to 22. And then you had another 1900 that was in there in 2023 and only 1095 has been committed right now. It's saying it's 57% committed, but that's just for 2023. I believe it's higher than that. It's probably maybe, I mean, it's probably lower than that as far as how many kids actually are committed. The percentage wise, I wouldn't be surprised if it's down in like the forties, 40% committed. Because they're not adding the guys who are still in limbo from 2021 or 2022. Or they're not even accounting for kids that are not playing football anymore. They just leave the sport. And I find that very disheartening because I feel that these kids, whether they get cut by their coach or whether they just are on the depth chart for the next three years of their college career and they're just on, you know, second or third string, you still. I feel like a lot of kids still miss out on the opportunity to learn, be great in any other fashion that you can around the program or, you know, just put it out there to where you can be seen, you know, it, it, it to me, I find it, I, I kind of find it disheartening because a lot of these kids have dreams. A lot of these kids has aspirations to be something and, and, and everybody can't make it. Everybody's not going to make it. I mean, we already know that everybody's not going to make it, but for them to get bad advice, bad information, ego situations, people are telling them or uh, that they are supposed to be this and that due to peer pressure that really um, affects a lot of things. And, and in some cases that that's killing their dream, that killing their aspirations. And sometimes they're killing their opportunities because a lot of these kids don't even want to go down a level and they don't want to play junior college. And I mean, I don't want to make it sound crazy, but you look at certain players that, that was in the NFL, uh, Cam Newton. I know it was the whole laptop situation, but he had to go to Blaine College. Went to Blaine College, came back and played for Auburn. After A lot of people don't realize Cam Newton was Tim Tebow's backup. He left. Went down to, you know, with the whole laptop situation. Went to Blinn College. Balled out. I think he had like one or two national championships with that with the junior college. I can't remember. Went to Auburn and had a phenomenal career. Not only just at, 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 at Auburn, but even at in the NFL. Sometimes you can make a name for yourself at a junior college or a, a, a D2 or FCS. If you put the work in and, and stand out, you can make your way on to an NFL roster. It happens, you know. Look at Troy Anderson for the Falcons. He was at a D2 school, or I think FCS, one of the two. I think John Comiskey was another one. I remember him. He played for the Lions, I think. There's a lot of guys who, you know, go through D2, D3, HBCUs, FCS, whatever the case may be, to make it. I wanted to make this episode just to say this. If you're listening to this and you're a kid, if you don't take anything out of this, I want you to take this. Don't give up. Don't let any situation stop you from being who you, who you want to be. If you realize after a year or two, college football isn't for you, you walk away, that's fine. But sometimes it'll be okay just to stick it out if that's if you really want to play. I, I commend a lot of people who have changed positions to to stay relevant on college football. And I, I try my best not to name names throughout this entire situation, but Sam Kennerson for Georgia Southern is a perfect example for this. He was a good 
excellent recruit from Chad Lunsford from Louisiana, came all the way to Georgia Southern to play quarterback. He was supposed to be the one that was going to play behind Justin Tomlin, Shai Wirtz, and, you know, Cam Ransom came around as well. But he was going to try to play quarterback. It didn't work out. But for him for the for him to make something of of make a, make his stock be more valuable, he decided to go and play wide receiver. And he played very really well until he blew out his knee. I expect him to have a monster season coming in this next season. But I love the fact that what he's done, he made a tremendous transition from quarterback to receiver. I mean, phenomenal play that he did, that he, that he had when um, I saw some few great plays during the spring game, the Nebraska game. It was just so unfortunate he got injured, but hopefully he'll be back and ready to go. So don't give up. Don't give up. I did promise myself I wasn't going to name any names, and I did, but I, I'm, I'm literally proud of Sam Kennison. I, I, I really, I love what he's done to step his game up. There's other players I could mention. I, I, I wouldn't want to go there because there's some positives and negatives to both sides. I will say this. I really wish certain players stayed at Georgia Southern. I will say that. I understand a few that made a decision that it was best for them, and I think it was a good move. But there's other players that I really wish they would have stayed. And I wish there's other players who was in other schools stayed where they are. Especially the ones that was in limbo that really legitimately could have made the team if they just pushed through. It actually sucks. You got 40% of these kids in 2023 that don't have a home right now. Some of these places saying they're undecided. I'm not sure. Because that 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 goes to the notion, the saying that you have a lot of offers. I'm not saying it's not true. I don't, I'm not saying that it is true that they, that most of these kids that are undecided have a lot of offers. But I feel like if an offer come their way, I think they would take it. And if they don't, you know, they're going to be those kids that's going to be stuck in limbo for 2024. And uh. I just find it unfortunate, man. It really is because I, I believe that a lot of these kids had have the potential to be great if they just stick it out. And I'll say it once again because I know people are probably going to say this. I know there are situations where coach promises don't fall through. I know there's some instances where the program is not living up to their expectations or whatever the case may be. But if you decide to leave because of a depth chart issue or, you know, something that, I feel like you can work out if you just work hard. I highly advise you to do that. I think it'll make you a better player. That, that's just my, it, to me, I feel like it's a much better situation than just being in limbo without a home. I've said enough, and this went way longer than I thought it would be. We're going up to almost 19 minutes. I wanted to be like this like a 10 or 11 minute episode for Friday, but here we are. If you made it this far, thank you. I really do. If you like this commentary, hit this like button, share the podcast. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I am on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts. I am also on YouTube and Rumble. Let me know what you guys think about the transfer portal. I wanted to switch this around a little bit and give you some thoughts and opinions about this. I think this is a problem for players. I think it could be a useful tool, but at the same time, it it, it can be very detrimental. And to a lot of players that enter the transfer portal, you're starting to see that. I'm going to get out of here. You guys have a fantastic weekend. This weekend, I'm going to be doing a little bit of work, and I'm also going to be getting some of this stuff moved. If you see on my wall, all my games are pretty much off the wall. Everything else is probably going to be coming down. And uh, these games behind me right here will be next. And all the stuff over here is after that. Um, Hopefully, everything continues to go well with this move. You guys wish me luck. I will see you guys on Monday. Y'all take it easy, and y'all be blessed. Peace.